So here you are in this new uh, alternative meat sector, and you've really been a leader in this. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, people call it a craze, you know? Um, it's really changing how some people are eating. Every movement has a leader. Are you the leader for this? I believe that the consumer is leading this movement. And you do. Particularly the younger consumer. Uh, when we speak at universities, uh, it's standing room only. Um, now, when I'm at an investor conference, uh, it's well populated, but it's not in any way the same energy or enthusiasm, right? And so kids today at colleges and younger understand the idea that you don't need an animal to produce a piece of meat better than anybody else. Let's do another poll question. If you've ever considered going meatless, what was the number one reason? And we've given you four reasons. Uh, let's see. Well, the meat, never considered going meat free is the smallest group of you enlightened people here. Um, but my health is the number one reason, which is interesting to me because some of the things that dietitians have said is there's too much salt, um, in some cases there's too much fat, that maybe it's not really better for you than, than, than a burger. So people have to write something that's going to get a click and be read, <laughs> right? <laughs> And, uh, and so, but it does, have so, it does have sodium in it. You would like to get whittle that down, wouldn't you? So both the sodium and the saturated fat are obviously things that we'd like to bring down, but any product would like to do that. And so I think it's important to frame it in the right context. So we offer a burger that's completely seasoned. We would do nothing with it. Right. And I think it has 16% of, of the daily value of sodium. Compare that to a seasoned burger, not an unseasoned piece of beef, and that's the right point of comparison. When you think about what's driving doctors to recommend less and less consumption of animal protein, it's not just those factors, right? It's things like insulin-like growth factor, TMAO, um, heme iron, uh, all these things that are in animal protein that are not in our product. So how do you keep that sales growth going? Because you've got U.S. retail sales of, of, of plant-based foods up 11% in the past year. The total food market's up just, just shy of, of 2%. Is this just a spike that peters out, or is this a new... Yeah, so I love, I, I love this question, and I love all these you know, um, research firms that are trying to you know, quantify, quantify it, and they're all dead wrong. Uh, I mean, they talk about the market being $35 billion. Like, we're going to be a $35 billion company. That's absolutely clear in my mind. And what we're doing is building a, a platform that allows us to not only provide all the taste, all the nutrition, but if we get that third pillar, which is price, we should be cheaper than animal protein. It's a $1.4 trillion industry. We can get a significant amount of this. When will we have the day when the plant-based meat, you, when you can't tell the difference between the animal meat and the beyond meat? We're, we're certainly not there yet, and, and nobody in the sector is. Um, you know, it's, uh, it takes a long time. We, but I would say, you know, within a five-year period, I think we'll, we'll be there. Some products are easier than other. Sausage is easier, for example, because you have spices that you can use. Uh, but a steak is much harder. It's naked to the eye. You can see where the distribution of fat and protein is. But those things are important, and we're working on them. Do you really see alternative meat transforming the family dinner table? Because it's not no. really a habit yet. We don't need to denigrate meat. Meat is a great part of our culture. I eat a lot of it, you know. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I want to keep eating it. And that's really what my company is about, is let's enable people to eat what they love, including myself. I love fried chicken. So I it's love, meat. It's meat. So think about what meat is. So we can insist that meat has to come from a chicken, a cow, or a pig. And that's been a historical interpretation or understanding of meat. But there's another interpretation or understanding of meat, which is composition. And if you think about the composition of meat, it's actually quite simple at a, at a macro level. It's amino acids, it's lipids, it's trace minerals, it's vitamins. And just like all of us in this room, it's predominantly water. And so if I can deliver those amino acids, those lipids, trace minerals, trace vitamins, and water in the same architecture as animal protein, it presents to your sensory system in the same way, who's to say that's not meat? What's the biggest misconception out there? about alternative meat? Man, there are a lot. <laughs> there are a lot. Um, processed, I think, is the biggest issue. That's been one of the complaints, is that it's too processed. It's not like a, a, a whole grain. I mean, I think even Brian Nickel from Chipotle, who we just had on, has said that it's, it's, a, they don't, it's too processed for his, his restaurants right now. Yeah, and I think that's a misunderstanding, and, and we look forward to, to educating people about that. Anyone in the country is welcome to come to our facilities unannounced, knock on the door, and we will give you a tour. We're very proud of what we do, but I ask you to do the same thing in the meat industry and see what happens. We're not trying to hide anything from you. Like, what we do is we take protein directly from the plant, we run it through heating, cooling, and pressure, 
which basically creates, let's say the protein presents like this in plants, and I'm making these forms up like this. We need to get them to reset into the muscular structure. That's our process. It's not a question of processed or not processed. It's a tale of two processes and which one do you want, right? Most people eat industrially raised animals. That's a process. It's a process that involves, depending on the species, antibiotics, hormones, you know, veterinary drugs. So we use 99% less water. We use 90% less land. We use half the energy and we emit 90% fewer emissions. So tell me which process is better. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Beyond Meat podcast. So I thought it'd be cool just to switch things up right there and just start the podcast with uh, some recent interviews with Ethan Brown, you know, the CEO, obviously, for those of you who aren't aware. And uh, he said some pretty interesting things in those interviews that I think you guys, uh, hopefully you got a lot out of it. Uh, he said some pretty, pretty awesome stuff here. And I'm going to highlight some of the stuff that he did say and just kind of you know, further comment on it, some things that I thought were key. But first of all, I just want to say right off the bat, we have a lot of news to get to today, just a lot of stuff here. So uh, bear with me, you know, this is probably going to be a pretty long episode. But uh, anyways, let's get into some of these main points I wanted to highlight first that I thought were really interesting. So uh, one of the first things that, that I thought was interesting was the lady that was interviewing him asked, you know, like, every movement like this has a leader. And she asked him, you know, do you think that you're the leader of this movement? And he has a really great response where he says, no, I think the consumer is actually the leader, you know, implying that younger people are leading the movement, you know, from, from all these, uh, I think he's gone to universities and stuff. And, and he, he just sees a lot of energy from young people. And uh, that is true. So, I mean, Gen Z and millennials, as we know, they're leading this plant-based movement. So, I mean, there's just further confirmation right there. And moving on there, you know, he addresses some uh, common misconceptions and, and almost kind of hit pieces on, you know, Beyond Burger. Like people say that it has a lot of saturated fat and sodium when in reality you know when people are talking about the beyond burger and beyond Meat products you know they're just kind of judging them as they are on their own you know not comparing them to actual meats they just say oh look at how much sodium look at how much you know fat these products have but they fail to compare it to the actual meat counterpart which is what ethan was saying in this interview um he, he was saying that uh the beyond burger contains six only 16 percent of your daily recommended sodium which is not that much at all you know, especially if you're just having these like, you know, a couple times a week as a treat. And uh, they also only can contain 18% of the uh, daily recommended fat and 25% of the saturated fat. You know, and then he talks about how people compare it to, you know, unseasoned meat, which, you know, obviously a seasoned burger probably has just as much sodium, if not more sodium. And uh, as we all know, the Beyond Burger has 35% less saturated fat than a regular burger, you know. And uh, speaking of uh, those statistics there then also at, at one point in the interview the lady pulls up there was a survey that i guess they did with the audience if you're watching on youtube then uh, you saw in the video the survey was if you've ever considered going meatless what was the number one reason and 56.6 uh, percent of people said for my health now this is a huge thing because you know a lot of people try to say you know that plant-based meat is going to become irrelevant you know once we have lab-grown meat but if 56.6 percent of people are doing it for their health then, you know, lab-grown meat isn't going to be any more healthy than, you know, real meat that we have right now. It's still going to have the carcinogenic properties, uh, you know, the heme and everything, the IGF-1, you know, all, all these things that, you know, cause all these problems and cancer and inflammation and everything. And uh, if the majority of people that are going plant-based are doing it for their health, then, you know, if, even if they are able to, you know, stop the environmental effects or even the ethical treatment of animals with lab-grown meat, um, there's still half of those people, the majority of those people are still going to want to eat plant-based because of health reasons, which I think is really a really, really important stat to, to get behind, you know, because that shows the main driving factor of this movement. And then you had, you know, environmental worries with 16.7% and then ethical treatment of animals for 16.7% as well. And then you only had a small percent, 10% of people saying that they never considered going meat-free. So, uh, yeah, I think that, that those are very interesting statistics right there. Uh, very interesting recent statistics. So again, just very cool, sh uh, cool shit. I almost just said cool shit for some reason. But anyways, guys, so then later on in the interview, you know, um, the lady is like, oh, how are you going to, you know, keep this growth going? And uh, then Ethan, you know, talks about all these predictions that people have for like the fake meat industry and everything. And uh, Ethan just straight out, you know, says and predicts, I think he said this multiple times, that he believes they're going to be a $35 billion company right now which uh, with their current market cap, they're 8 billion. So that would be roughly a 4X in price from their current uh, price right now. And I believe that they could even be, you know, a $70 billion company one day. But yeah, I mean, that just shows the, the, the confidence that he has is great. You know, he really just is trying to stick it to the haters. And I believe actually I read there, there was another article that came out, kind of a weird 
um, title for an article, you know, that they made a whole article like Beyond Meat CEO hangs up sign that says like the haters give him energy or they give him fuel. But yeah, Ethan is a very competitive guy. You know, he loves sports and everything. So again, I think he's he's very, very driven, very determined. He has the vision. Um, and that's one of one of my bear scenarios. You know, uh, someone commented if I was ever going to make a bear scenario video for Beyond. And I will uh, eventually, probably within the next you know month uh, of all the possible bear scenarios. And one of my bear scenarios where I would be very, very afraid or probably even sell all of my shares is uh, if Ethan steps down as CEO. That would probably really, really, I would not like that at all. Because Ethan, again, he... I feel like he's gotten them this far, you know, it's his drive and his vision that's, you know, growing the company so rapidly and and, and getting all these deals. I, I really believe that it's all in his hands. And obviously he has a great team too, but he's the one, you know, driving his team and just really going hard, man. He's going hard. And if Ethan ever stepped down, you know, that that would be definitely one of my bear scenarios where I would, it would be such a big deal to me that I would maybe even sell all of my shares, you know, so I'm uh, really hoping that doesn't happen. I really hope Ethan uh, plans on staying there, you know, until they are a $35 billion company like he envisions. Um, and I think he will do that because again, he has this insane amount of passion for what he's doing. But so one of the next uh, questions that the lady asks him is, uh, you know, at what point are we not going to be able to tell the difference between real meat and the beyond meat? And Ethan actually said within the, he thinks within the next five years, uh, they might be able to reach that goal where, where you won't be able to tell the difference between, you know, beyond products and real meats, which is really you know, interesting and awesome that he uh, thinks that they will be able to do that. And uh, a few other quotes here that really stood out to me in terms of uh, some of the misconceptions uh, that they were mentioning, which is kind of funny because I made that, you know, recent misconceptions video. Um, you know, Ethan says that a lot of people think it's really processed. And then he said that he invites anyone in the country to visit their facilities and he'll give them a tour. You know, and he says, you know, try doing that with the meat industry. They won't let you in, which is true. Um, he says, uh, we're not trying to hide anything from you, which I think is really awesome how transparent they are and how proud they are of the work that they're doing, you know, and then he says, uh, I, I really love this quote, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all a process, but which process do you prefer? You know, do you prefer uh, the non-transparent process with the meat industry, you know, where animals are being brutally slaughtered, you know, the, the workers are being abused, um, they're pumping them with all these hormones and everything, you know, we have no idea what's going on, they won't let any people with cameras in there, they won't give you a tour, they're very uninviting, or do you want, you know, a process where you can, like beyond where you can visit their facility, they will give you a tour, they'll show you every process it takes to make their meat, you know, it just seems like a better consumer uh, experience to me. So that pretty much does it guys for me uh, going over those two little clips there. Really, really great clips. Uh, I wish I could find the full interview somehow, but I think CNN business is just like releasing them in uh, in little snippets right now uh, with their articles that, that they're coming out with. So uh Pretty interesting stuff. Now, moving on to, to some other things here that I thought was interesting. Now, as you guys know, I already uh, made a video announcing the new Beyond Burger 3.0 is launching May 3rd. Now, I just kind of want to reiterate that, you know, for the podcast audience, maybe for people who, for, for like the six people who found me on Spotify so far or uh, Apple Podcasts, you know, because I do kind of want to try to condense everything into the podcast if I can. So if I did mention it on YouTube, you know, I will say, you know, Definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not, uh, Beyond Boy. Um, there's some topics that I will just cover in a video beforehand because it might be like urgent news or really exciting news. I really just want, want to get the news out there right away. But I will try to do a quick recap on the podcast for anyone who might have missed it. So a uh, quick recap of the Beyond Burgers. You know, there's uh, uh, they were talking about the 55% less saturated fat one, but I guess that's scrapped for now or we're just really not sure of that. They just didn't announce anything with that. Um, they're just going with their one new burger right now, the uh, with a new meatier taste, and uh, they have a four pack now, and uh, yeah, so they're selling a four pack and a two pack, and they're going to be available May third. So that's pretty much all you got to know with that. And one thing I thought was really interesting here is I was comparing the uh, current ingredients of the current Beyond Burger to the new ingredients of the new burger, which if if you go on their website, they actually have the uh, the new burger's ingredients listed right here. How you can tell is the uh, new meatier taste it says on it. That is the giveaway right there. Now, uh, one thing I did find interesting is it looks like that they uh, supplemented, you know, some key vitamins and minerals here, which I did not see on the original burgers ingredients. So uh, I guess they're kind of following in uh, Impossible's path right there, maybe trying to compete with them because I know Impossible, you know, puts B12 in their burgers. So right now, um, it looks like Beyond trying to do the same thing. So here's some vitamins and minerals that they put in. So they have zinc sulfate, um, vitamin B3, vitamin B6, and vitamin B12 as well as calcium uh, panth panthenate, 
Uh, not sure what that is, but uh, yeah, but other than that, I didn't really see any other discrepancies with ingredients. Everything else pretty much looks the same. And uh, a lot of the ingredients, the, the, the new stuff that's probably giving it the meatier taste is hidden within the natural flavors ingredients, which uh, if you guys didn't know, the natural flavors ingredients, uh, they don't have to disclose what's in that as long as it's derived from a natural source. So uh, yeah, that's probably where a lot of the secret ingredients are coming from. And uh, also a quick bit of news here, we have Beyond named one of the Time 100 most influential companies. So this is pretty awesome, you know, that they were included on here. Today, Time revealed the first ever Time 100 most influential companies, a new list and expansion of the annual Time 100 franchise that highlights 100 businesses making an extraordinary impact around the world. Beyond Meat is proud to be recognized as a category leader and to be included in the inaugural list of the Time 100 most influential companies. To assemble the list, Time solicited nominations across every sector, including healthcare, entertainment, transportation, technology, and more from its global network of editors and correspondents, as well as from industry experts. Each company was then evaluated on key factors, including relevance, impact, innovation, leadership, ambition, and success. Beyond Meat is the only plant-based meat company on the prestigious inaugural list of companies that are making significant impacts on the world alongside other game-changing brand names, such as Amazon, Apple, Google, Netflix, Nike, and Tesla. So that's pretty cool, guys. They're being mentioned alongside the likes of Tesla, Apple, Google, Netflix, you know, Amazon. This is pretty awesome stuff, you know, I mean, this, again, could just be foreshadowing of how big they could be and, you know, the even the potential that time that magazine sees in them. Interesting stuff right there. And coming into the next bit of news here, guys, we have Beyond Meat establishes groundbreaking plant-based diet initiative fund at the Stanford University School of Medicine. The scientific and academic initiative will create a repository of cutting edge research that will help drive and inform additional breakthrough product innovations to advance human health. Now, this is pretty awesome, guys. This is pretty cool. Right here, pretty cool news. I mean, they're working with Stanford. You know, Stan Stanford's big. And uh, apparently they have a five-year endeavor right here. I'm, I'm just going to read this uh, verbatim really quick um, because this is some really, really cool stuff. Beyond Meat, a leader in plant-based meat today, announced the establishment of a pioneering plant-based diet initiative fund at the Stanford U University School of Medicine. The five-year endeavor is designed to provide peer-reviewed, clinically significant studies on the health implications of a plant-based diet, including plant-based meat, and will help to generate data to drive and inform Beyond Meat's research and development. So that's really interesting that they're getting help from Stanford to, you know, generate data to inform their research and development. As a preeminent leader in plant-based innovation for human health, Beyond Meat's commitment to using only simple plant-based ingredients without GMOs or bioengineered ingredients has set the industry standard for better for you plant-based meat products. The comprehensive research program will be spearheaded by Stanford scientists and doctors who will gather research from a variety of interdisciplinary fields and convene symposia and colloquia. So I just had to Google really quick because I had no idea what those words meant. So apparently symposia is the plural version of symposium, a conference or meeting to discuss a particular subject. Um, also a collection of essays or papers on a particular subject by a number of contributors. Colloquia is the plural version of colloquium, which is an academic conference or seminar. So yeah, knowing that, let's uh, reread that. So they will gather research from a variety of interdisciplinary fields and convene symposia and colloquia with the aim of advancing a more nutritious and environmentally sustainable food system. The Plant-Based Diet Initiative Fund will sustain a variety of programs, including exploring how plant-based meat and diets can have a positive health impact, including on the reduction of risk factors of chronic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, and cancer, unearthing new plant-based proteins and ingredients to help inform game-changing product development, producing an overarching repository of globally accessible resources and data on the health impacts of plant-based proteins. So this second bullet point really stands out to me. They're saying that they're unearthing new plant proteins and ingredients to help inform game-changing product development. So that's really, really interesting. If they're somehow able to get unearth these new plant proteins that we maybe have never even heard of, you know, that they can use in their products to, you know, you know, make them better, make them taste more like meat, that would be crazy. And, and they say other ingredients as well. So they're working with actual scientists and doctors here, guys. So this is really awesome. Again, uh, that's pretty much it for this article, but uh, we'll see where this goes, guys. Uh, who knows where, where this might take them. Maybe they'll have some breakthrough you know, discoveries. But uh, anyways, guys, let's get to the last piece of news here. The probably the most exciting piece of news that I saved for last because, uh, you know, I want to tease you guys a little bit. Plus, um, it is, I think, just a rumor. So uh, you might want to take it with a grain of salt. But uh, so without further ado, let's just get into this. So Beyond Meat telling customers faux chicken is coming this summer. This is an article from Bloomberg that actually flew under the radar, uh, came out three days ago. 
Um, maybe it wasn't like that big of news because again, it might be a rumor. So Beyond Meat is close to adding plant-based chicken to its product lineup. The faux meat maker is telling customers it's preparing to launch a chicken alternative this summer. According to people familiar with the plans who asked not to be named because the plans are private. So it seems, again, they got a hold of an insider, an insider went to them or something. But apparently Bloomberg reached out to them and the company didn't respond to requests for comments. Adding plant-based chicken to its lineup would mark a major expansion for the seller of pea-based beef burgers and sausages in the supermarkets and restaurants. They then go on to say that chicken is the most popular meat in the US and you know, them being able to even capture a small portion of this market, you know, would be really good for them. Beyond Meat has been experimenting with faux chicken for years, including previously selling a frozen chicken strip product it discontinued in early 2019. More recently, it has tested plant-based chicken at trial runs with KFC. It has featured different versions of breaded nuggets, including one made of a ground meat, in quotes, and later a product that more closely duplicated a muscle-like structure, Chief Executive Officer Ethan Brown told Bloomberg in an interview in January 2020. Those KFC types were limited runs though. In an interview last month, Beyond's Chief Growth Officer Chuck Muth declined to pinpoint when a chicken product would launch, saying only that it would be coming sometime in the relatively near future. And uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this podcast. Holy crap, that was a lot of news to cover. But I did it, guys. I did it. If you enjoyed the podcast, guys, leave a like. And as always, I love hearing from you guys in the comments. If you have anything to say in the comments, if you're on Spotify or iTunes, a five-star review is appreciated. And uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. I am out of here.